Hello and welcome to the Daylighting in Ladybug Tools series. In this video, we will review how to prepare geometry in Rhino for daylight simulation. While you can use grasshopper components to create geometry, in this series, we will focus on using geometry drawn in Rhino. So I have two versions of the same building modeled in Rhino as a starting point. And I've used two different methodologies for constructing the model, but what's common between the two is that they're both single surface models, right? So we don't need to show wall thickness. Um, <clears throat> for the most part, we can use single surface um, rooms, uh, windows, uh, skylights, context to communicate um, the geometry, right? So the first model is based on closed poly surfaces, right? So it's a joined set of surfaces that create a closed room. There's no gaps in it. It's uh, considered a watertight room. And then the windows and the skylights are modeled as coplanar surfaces over top of the closed room geometry. So this methodology lends itself um, to creating um, both energy and daylight simulations together uh, because for an energy model you want to make sure that the uh, geometry is drawn in a very specific way and so if you want to do energy analysis alongside with daylighting analysis you have to um, it's recommended that you follow the closed polysurface with coplanar uh, apertures, which is which stands for windows or skylights or any opening in um, your rooms or your building. Um, context is also modeled as closed poly surfaces. Then the other methodology is specific to daylighting only. If you're only doing daylighting and you want to get quick analysis and you, uh, you've already modeled your geometry in a specific format. Um, you can use this. So in this example, I have uh, rooms with windows punched out of them. So the, you can see here, let me move this out of the way. You can see that there's a void in this wall and then the window fits in that wall. Uh, the same is true for the skylights. Uh, and all of the faces are modeled as individual surfaces. So nothing is joined. And the benefit to this uh, workflow is if you have a very detailed interior, say you have different paint colors on each wall and you want to test the, the impacts of different material types uh, at a very granular level, then starting with a surface by surface model or a face by face model is the best bet. So let's go into Grasshopper and see what that, what, how that translates into the Ladybug tool script. I'm going to open up my grasshopper and I already have two um, geometry setups here. So when we're looking at the face by face workflow, um, you have a lot more components, but we're going to start with the room based workflow, which is a little bit simpler to work with. Um, so you want to start with the room, HB room from solid component which is found in Honeybee. Under the Create panel, you'll find the Honeybee Room from Solid component. So if you click on that and drop it down, then um, your first input will be your geometry. So this is just a geom uh, native grasshopper geometry component parameter. And I've renamed it by right-clicking on the icon and giving it a name and clicking on the paint bucket so that the text shows. I like doing that just because it helps organize the script um, and it keep, helps you keep track of what you've con connected. So if you have multiple buildings, you can give them different names. Um, so you start with that. For now, we're not gonna talk about any of the uh, options for it, but for uh, we're assuming a, a rectilinear building with a simple uh, roof, a square roof. Um, and then you can add your windows as apertures. So the apertures are also found in the create component. And you can do, you can drop in HB aperture. So I have that for windows. And this is again, another geometry component. 
sorry, a parameter. And same thing for skylights. So that's a geometry parameter that's renamed as skylights and just goes in as a aperture. And in a future video, you can learn how to add radiance modifiers to adjust the properties of the windows versus the skylights. For now, we're just going to keep everything as default since this video is focused on setting up your geometry. And lastly, to set up context, you can create honeybee shade. Uh, and that is also located in the Create tab. It's all the way at the bottom, so here it is, uh, Honeybee Shade. You could just drop that in and connect a geometry parameter to the geo input. Um, there's one more step. So when you have apertures, you need to connect them to the rooms. And so what we use is the Honeybee Add subface. Uh, and this is true for windows, skylights, doors. Uh, and they're, they're, you can think of them as uh, child surfaces to the parent room. So that component is also found in Create. You can go and go to Add Subface. So we're going to connect the rooms as HB objects, and then the windows and skylights are subfaces. Uh, and all of that goes into Create a Honeybee model. So the Honeybee model gets the rooms and it gets the shades in this workflow. I know it's a little bit confusing because it shows faces, apertures, and doors in here, but in this workflow, when you're working with rooms upstream in your script and you've already applied subfaces in creating um, with the HB add subface component, you don't want to add faces here again or apertures or doors. You can give each Honeybee model a name by connecting a panel to here. So for example, this can be the um, room or solid approach model. And I used a shortcut. If you do quotation marks, you can start typing and it will create a panel automatically. Okay, so that's how you would start with a room by room workflow. And that was tied to this first model where we had closed poly surfaces with coplanar apertures in, in the form of skylights and windows. And the context is right here. To Now let's shift over to the surface by surface approach. So the surface by surface approach in Ladybug Tools is very similar to the room by room approach. It just gives you the ability to add more detail on a surface by surface basis. So the first component that we start with in the surface by surface approach is the honeybee face component, which is in create. And it's uh, octagon right there, oh, sorry, hexagon. And uh, you can connect all of the opaque surfaces and add them as a geometry. I like to start with walls as separate from ceilings and separate from floors. Uh, typically, each one of these components will have a different material. And so while you can start with defaults by applying all of the geometry to one honeybee surface, a honeybee face, uh, because the component, if you look at the type input and read the notes there, it says the default is automatically set on the normal direction of the face. So if it's up, it's going to automatically recognize it as a roof or ceiling. If it's down, it will be a floor. And anything vertically oriented, it would be a wall. So this is an optional input. I have a panel that says that this wall, this is a wall type. There might be some instances where you may uh, want to override the default or just make sure that it reads correct, like uh, it's reading correctly. Right? So I have this is the component that you would use for your opaque materials, anything that is not transparent. Now, when you get into windows and skylights, we're going to use the aperture component. It's the same component as we used in the room from solid workflow. So we bring down HB aperture and uh, we're just keeping the geometry as separate. So we have windows versus skylights because in the future you can add different properties to windows versus skylights. Right? Um, and 
And the, lastly, similar to the room from solid approach, you can add a shade by going to create and any context can be a honeybee shade. And that's basically what you're, this is how you can build a surface by surface honeybee model, right? Uh, we're skipping the add subface step that we had in the previous workflow. Here, we're just going to take um, the faces, all of our opaque faces, bring them to the faces input, bring our apertures and connect them to apertures and connect our shade to shades. There are instances where you may have a hybrid model or a hybrid geometry setup where some rooms that are simple or if you have, for example, residential units that are duplicated over several floors and nothing really changes on them, but you have a ground floor lobby or some um, other program type that has a lot of interior detail that you want to model for a daylighting model. You might do all of your residential units using the uh, room from solids approach and you might add the faces of your lobby space or non-residential space program using the surface by surface approach. In that case, you would just add rooms as we did uh, from this workflow and the shades it would not change, right? You would bring your faces, apertures and doors in the face by face approach. You just have to be careful that you don't duplicate faces and rooms from solids uh, so that it doesn't um, give you an error. That's all for this video and thank you so much for watching.